everyone, it's Katie, also rocking.kk on Facebook and Instagram. So, I am going to start this video out. I'm going to be doing a collaboration with Wanda the Foil Lady. And um, I'm going to be using the Derwent Ink Tints pencils. These are pretty awesome. They are kind of pricey. Um, when I bought them, I got a real good deal on the 72 pack, so now they're over $100, but I only paid like 70-something bucks for them. Uh, they're light fast, so they're not going to fade like your regular watercolors are, and um, they're super bold and bright, and you'll see that I'm going to do a Santorini rock with the uh, pencils and just kind of give you a preview of what they look like and how they go on the rock. I do my Derwent pencil a little bit different. I don't draw on the rock and then wet it. I don't wet the pencil and then draw on the rock. I actually wet a brush and uh, wet the tip of the pen the pencil and then I apply it to the rock so I just feel like I have more control that way and um, that's kind of how I've found my way around it so I just thought I would share what I do I have picked out let's see sun yellow deep blue teal green fuchsia and violet I'm not sure if I'll use all these or if I'll want more, but this is what I'm going to start with. And I really don't have a plan on what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of start throwing some colors on the rock. So I'm going to put this away for a bit. I'm going to grab a paper towel, put under the rock. I really love doing mixed media. And, um, so I tend to use all of my tools pretty often. So they all have their place. So I'm going to wet my round brush. And this is a 12 round. I just grabbed one. I didn't want one too big though. Uh, because it's a smaller Santorini. If it's a big Santorini, I'll use a big round brush. So you definitely want to get used some round brushes for watercolor if you're going to be doing this. So I'm going to start with deep blue because that's what I picked up. And I just wet the tip really, really good. I want to make sure that I get plenty, plenty, plenty of color on that brush. And then I'm just going to kind of mess around here. Not quite sure what I'm doing yet. I'm going to start with some fuchsia. These are some of my favorite colors These that I'm using today. So a lot of people like to draw on the rock and then add color. And one of my issues with doing that is that... In my experience, when I've done that, I've ended up with some color that hadn't been activated. And so when I went to seal or do anything that was liquid, um, it pulled it right up. So therefore, if you're coloring straight on the rock and then wetting it down, you're going to want to seal it first before you do anything. Because otherwise, it, you can smear And I don't want to do that. I've had that happen. So that's why I've kind of formed my own way that works for me. This is not the right way or the best way. It's just an option for you. If you want to try something different. Let's skip over to the yellow. Make sure that's rinsed good. You're going to need a quite quite a bit of water on here to get it going. 
oh, let me see, get in here so I can show you what I'm doing. See how that brush is starting to really get some yellow on it. I'm just going to kind of go in some spots here. Get a little more water. But these are super, super fun to do things with. And once you get down, down into a groove, you just start going and just doing what you want. Let's see, have I done all the colors? I think I have. Teal. Oh wait, I haven't done violet yet. Let's throw some violet in there. yeah add a little pop of violet and I'm just being random just have some fun this is a great stress reliever Okay, I paused for a second and dried it some because I've decided I think I'm going to go in and try to fill in some more yellow in here because I kind of like how this is going with the yellow in the background. So I'm just going to kind of pop in in some spaces because once you have your color dry, um it's pretty permanent so I wanted to make sure that for the most part it was dry that way I wasn't mixing colors too much it'll mix a little bit but I didn't want it to all kind of mesh together I, I wanted to to have some some yellow in between all of these little spots and I might leave some spots like right here I'm kind of liking how that looks with a little bit of white so I might leave that but I'm just trying to kind of go in between these little spots that I missed with some yellow And I don't know, these are kind of looking like abstract flowers to me a little bit. So, um, I might kind of go with that plan. And maybe do a little doodling, um, after this is dry. Actually, this is going to be a collaboration rock with Miss Wanda the Foil Lady, so... I bet she'll come up with something cool with foils for this. Or maybe we'll do foils and doodles. I'm just filling in this space over here and actually I'm going to grab another color over here like maybe a fuchsia. And I'm just going to add a little more color so that rock doesn't look, that side doesn't look so plain. Not much. I'm just kind of adding just a little color there. It's, you know, just to kind of break it up. It's just kind of on the side. But I kind of like, I kind of like how that looks. I just went for it, just 
playing around. I don't do that too often. Um, I have OCD, so sometimes it gets the best of me, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better at being more abstract, so... Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just dab that just a bit. I think I like this. I think I'm going to go with this. So you got some swirlies here going on. This is all ink tints. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to go ahead and give it a spray just because I don't want anything to move around at all. And um, that gives me extra protection. So I'll do a mat, a rustoleum mat uh, two times. I'll probably spray it a couple times just to be on the safe side and um, then Miss Wanda will be continuing on and doing something else cool with it. So thanks for watching this part. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and um, thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a great day. Hello, Wanda here, the Foiling Rock Lady, doing a collaboration with Miss Katie. She did these beautiful swirls on this rock with Derwent ink tents, ink pencils, and I'm going to add a tattoo. This is old school. Isn't that cool? So I'm just going to apply it on here like I do, and then we're going to add some color to it, and of course some foils. I think that's the way I want it. Nope. That's the way I want it. See, I always check yourself there. Yeah, like that. And then press it on. Make sure you got it where you want it because it is a bit sticky. And I use a brush to apply the tattoos. Controls the water that way. And just slop it on there. Get it nice and wet. Make sure you take off that cellophane, I forgot to say. You really want that off because if not, then you're applying your tattoo to that plastic and it's impossible to get it off of there. Learned that the hard way several times. So it's also good to trim out your tattoo. Trim the excess off before you apply it. And then once you got a lot of water on there, sort of give it a rub and then twist it a bit to see if it's ready. Add more water if it's not moving yet. You want the paper to easily move off of the tattoo. And just go real slow so that you don't pull it up. And be careful peeling it off, but you can lift a little and pull. Slide it off. Oh, that's beautiful. And then use your brush very gently to brush out the bubbles under your tattoo. Very awesome. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then we will give it some color. All right, our tattoo is dry. So I've decided to, with the collaboration assistance of Miss Katie, we're gonna use Violet Flex Oops, I'm sorry, what's this called? <laughs> Blue Violet Flash. And this is Dragon Flash. Don't have the bottle with me, but it's a green gold shift. And this is a violet, kind of purple pearl shift. Gorgeous. So just going to be doing some accent work just to draw out some color. And then we're going to do some lovely foiling. So in between the tattoo lines, I'm going to apply the violet blush just to get some 
definition and accent going here. So I'm not trying to cover up the lines in the tattoo, if you see. I'm just giving it some shift. See that? And I'm using a disposable eyeliner brush to do the painting with because it's a little bitty area, detailed. And I'm going to work my way around the rows the same way, going all around the petals. Okay, so that is painted on there. You can see the gold shift on the petals. That is the violet. Now I'm going to use the dragon flash in our leaves. Just accent. That's really pretty. So yeah, just paint it in where you want to. And these tattoos are available on Amazon. I have cut this from another tattoo, but I will definitely provide a link if you're interested. That's pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do the leaves. And then when that dries, we will start foiling. All right. Our paint is dry. Violet shift and dragon green shift. All right. I'm going to use my favorite transparent foils here with nail art foil glue by Mac art. And I have some in my dish somewhere here. Oh, this dish. Pardon. So pour a little off into your well. These wells are six for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Cannot beat that. And you can clean them out with acetone if you need to in between uh, uses. Nail art, uh, disposable eyeliner brush, and I'm going to start on the petals here. Start in the middle, and I'm going to do separate sections because I want some definition for these petals. So I'm going to do more than one section at a time, but I'm going to do them not next to each other, if that makes sense. So I have this one here in the middle. Can you see this? And then I'm going to come over here and do this section. So they're not right next to each other, not touching. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to move around like that. And then I will pick a foil for these parts that will be different from the next parts that I do.
So I think this is going to be a brilliant way to use another tattoo, a non-colored tattoo, black and white, and embellish it while it's embellishing. That's a word I love. So the tattoo's embellished your rock, and you are embellishing the tattoo. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cure this. I'm actually... going to torch it real quick to get the bubbles out real fast you want to be careful because you don't want to bubble up your tattoo one cycle which is about 60 seconds all right that is cured and I'm going to apply I call it laser isn't that great it's like little glitter onto these now you can see the different sections that I did there. They look like bubbles. Okay. And that is exactly what we're wanting. Just these sections. And then we're going to do some other sections. Okay. So now you can go back in here and do the places in between but don't touch don't touch okay so you want to go in between the sections and try not to touch what you've already done with the glue because it will just blend right together so trying to do some defining sections here and if you have the flashlight the UV LED flashlight this is an awesome way to use it for these little spot cures so that your glue doesn't run into the others. But can you see the definition we're getting? Looks like bubbles and petals. That's what we're looking for there. And spot here. couple more little places and then give it a spot here. Oh, that's turning out so great. Okay. And then grab a different foil from the first so that we can get texture going here. So I'm going to use the little discs this time. Oops. My scissors are dull. But okay. So I'm going to use the discs this time. And just go over. And make sure you've covered. all the sections that you uh, glued. Okay. 
very very pretty so now we have the big petals out here still to do I have to get a little more glue in my dish And same rules, just try not to touch petals to petal. like so This is so cool. You start working on something and then you're partway through it and it just keeps getting cooler and cooler. <laughs> See if I can make it. Ha! I think we did it. Okay, so now that all the petals are the glue's on, I'm going to cure it, and then we're going to do the last out layer with a different foil as well. Okay, we're cured, and I'm going to use the small crushed, no I'm not, I'm going to use the large crushed leaf, I mean glass foil, like this, on the outer petals. I'm going to turn it around and catch the center section. <laughs> Add it. And I'm just going to touch the places that need to be touched up with the foil. Gorgeous. So now you have one really beautiful foiled rose. 
And I think that's that. You can resin over that. You can do some lining to define the rows. You can use like a black Posca to just bring back your, if you wanted to do some additional lining. That looks nice. Nice line around the outer parts. And you can do this with um, brush also, brush and paint. Very nice. By adding the lines back in when you resin, you'll have good separation still. There you are. I don't know which way is up or down. <laughs> it could be either way, yeah? Gorgeous. So this has been a collaboration with Miss Katie Thompson and Wanda the Foil Lady. Um, if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit subscribe and click the like button. And then you can hit the bell if you want to be notified when we upload new content. We'll be seeing you soon. Bye.